In honor of the MLflow 2.0 release, I decided to take a look at it. I, to be honest, I really don't understand MLflow. I'm trying to learn it now. And at Continual, we get to work with lots of ML engineering teams. They are often using MLflow. So this is something I should know. And to try to figure this out or to try to get started, one thing I wanted to do was build a basic ML project and then track some model metrics. Think to myself like, okay, how do I track the actual models that I'm creating? How do I track the hyperparameters, the inputs to the model so that, that in, in theory, at least I would change over time. And then how do I track the model metrics so that I can see if my models are getting better or worse over time? Like we've got some basic input data, we've got the model itself, we've got some basic model output data. How would I do this? Because this is at least at the top, sur most surface, thinnest layer, this is one thing that MLflow is gonna help us do. How, how hard is it without? So here is my, you know, pretty crappy, but attempted basic ML pipeline copying directly. This is the scikit-learn example. In fact, the one, a modified version of what's in the MLflow docs. I tried to modularize this. It's still really ugly. So I've got like an ingest function split, blah, blah, blah. And then here is where I'm going to get some of the metadata. So basically like, look, I'm passing in some hyperparameters. These are the things that all change as the ML engineer, if I could call myself that. And then I'm going to get back both a model and some metrics, like how good is this model? We'll get some, we'll get some data about this. And in a very lazy, but kind of simple move, I'm writing the model itself. I'm storing this locally and then uploading it or checking it into Git. So here's each, each model itself. There's an ML model. Congratulations. You can see one. And then here are my model metrics in the world's ugliest CSV. And I've got a little timestamp so you can see, okay, this was the run. And here, here's the inputs that I used, my alpha and L1 ratio. Those are my hyperparameters. And then some corresponding metrics. So I can see, are, they, are these models getting better or worse? Now, this is very bad to be clear, but like as a, as a contrast, like, okay, I can write some code. I can get some of this data. At the simplest level, what does out of the box doing, configuring nothing, understanding nothing, MLflow give us? Well, it'll give me something like this. This is that exact same code. Now I'm, I'm just on the home screen. This is running a, a, the MLflow UI as a server side process. I'm running this locally. You can see each of the runs. You can see how long they took when I ran them, the models, all of my parameters and all of the metrics. And I can sort it that, you know, again, I haven't clicked beyond this. I don't know anything about MLflow, but the contrast between, oh, I've got this web application that we would host somewhere where we can all look at our model metrics and all of the different experiments that we've run. And we can see this again, it does more than this, but this is just that surface level versus something like this or, oh my goodness, let's go back into, you know, this, ugh, right? The difference is clear. So I'm excited to learn more about MLflow, especially the 2.0 release. MLflow recipes, stuff like that. Um, but at its most basic level, running through a quick example without it, I'm starting to better understand, oh, this is what it does. Seems quite useful.